Okay, so now we're working on problem nine from practice exam two, where we're supposed to prove uh, two following statements. And they've given us a note that we can use the fact in part A to prove part B, and also two hints, which is we can factor P squared minus one as P minus one times P plus one. And if you consider three consecutive integers, three divides exactly one of them. And using that, we're supposed to prove that for all prime integers, P greater than or equal to five, then four divides p squared minus one. Okay, so the first thing I always like to do um, for a proof is rewrite um, the proof um, in a, and figure uh, just, sorry. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is just uh, rewrite what I'm supposed to show, put that in a box, just so that I always have an idea towards what I'm supposed to work towards, okay? Um, so let's do that. So my want to show is, um, for all prime numbers p, where p is prime and p is greater than or equal to 5, um, then 4 divides p squared minus 1, okay? And I can kind of rewrite that as p squared minus 1 is equal to 4 times some integer, and that's just coming from the definition of divides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in a box so that I don't get confused um, and assume that this is something I know because this is something we don't know yet. This is something we need to prove. Um, and so I cannot use something I don't know yet to prove. Um, so you don't assume what, you, what you're supposed to prove, okay? So that's why it's in a box. Um, and this also gives me a clear goal. And my goal is to say something about P squared minus one. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna say, let's consider, um, p squared minus one. And I know this can be rewritten as p plus one times p minus one. And this is just coming from this hint over here. Um, and then we also are given a second hint, which is if I have three consecutive integers, three divides exactly one of them. Um, being able to divide it from three is not useful because I need to show that it is divisible by four. Um, so we're not gonna use that hint just yet. Um, but it does give me an idea. If I have three consecutive integers, can I say something about whether it's divisible by four? Um, let's see. If I can somehow factor a two out of this and a two out of this, um, then I can be able to say that you can factor a four out. Um, and I can factor a two out of each of them if they're even. Okay, so what do I know about P? Um, P has to be odd because p is prime and also because p is not equal to two because p is greater than or equal to five, right? So I know p has to be odd. If I know p has to be odd, therefore the number that comes before p and the number that comes after p both have to be even because consecutive integers. Okay, so then I can rewrite p plus one times p minus one as two a times two b, just because they're even, where a and b are some random, well, they're not ra random, but we know that they are even integers, um, which means that that is it can be written as four times AB or basically four times an integer because integer times integer is an integer. And so therefore, four divides P squared minus one. And that's my proof.